think it's important for more women to be involved in tech fields because having that representation, a different perspective, is something important in the world in any career. I thought I was interested in tech field, but I wasn't so sure. In high school, we didn't have a lot of tech courses, so I was looking for outside resources. We know that jobs in tech are the highest paying, fastest growing in our country and frankly around the world. If women are left behind, then that's a world of economic opportunity that they're being denied for themselves and for their families. And we know that that has to change. At Girls Who Code, we're on a mission to close the gender gap in tech and to change the image of what a computer programmer looks like and does. We work with girls across the country and now internationally who have come from communities that are historically underrepresented. Girls of color, black and Latina, and from low-income households. And Girls Who Code absolutely gives them that confidence and pride and convinces them that they can do anything. You're learning computer science every day. You get to see how people work. You have guest speakers who are these powerful women in tech who come in and talk to you. You get to go on field trips and see how tech changes lives. I cannot think of a better experience and that's what we give girls through Girls Who Code Programming. It's also about the sisterhood, the confidence, the bravery. A lot of what people call soft skills that are critical to them persisting in the field. We're definitely going in a really positive direction for women in tech fields, especially with programs that do form camaraderie between women. It's really great to have that kind of teamwork so that they can pursue those aspirations without feeling like they're alone. Girls Who Code is making a tremendous impact in the communities that we serve. Girls get a chance to see themselves as technologists, and they can bring those resources back to their communities and make a change. Yeah, you're going to encounter difficult problems and it's okay to even fail sometimes as long as you did stick through it, you have succeeded. Thank you Snap Inc. for hosting this important event on diversity in the tech industry, an issue that's close to my heart as the CEO of Girls Who Code, an organization working to close the gender gap in tech by 2030. At Girls Who Code, we always say that you can't be what you can't see. Girls learn in school and through culture about men like Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg and Albert Einstein and Neil Armstrong, but not about the women pioneers in the field like Katherine Johnson and Ada Lovelace and Grace Hopper. In their minds, a programmer is a boy in a hoodie alone in the basement or a man running a company in Silicon Valley. Before girls are 10 years old, they have already internalized these cultural touchstones. And these internalized beliefs resonate throughout their lives in elementary school, in high school, in college, and in the workforce. Each and every one of us, parents, educators, CEOs, hiring managers, and allies, all have a responsibility to change the narrative. Our girls, and especially our girls of color, need to know that computer science careers are for them. They can learn to code and build an exciting, thriving future for themselves while also making a difference in their own communities. But that's just the first step. None of the culture change work that we are trying to do matters if our young people don't have equal access to computer science programming and education. All our efforts to build a future of the tech workforce must be paired with meaningful pathways into STEM for all students, regardless of background. This was never more apparent than throughout the pandemic. The pandemic has exacerbated existing inequities in our education system, and our students are facing their greatest challenges yet. Understanding that half of our students come from historically underrepresented groups, we knew we had to act fast to adapt our programming to fit our new reality of virtual learning and continue to support our girls. We had to ask our students questions we never thought to ask with our most marginalized students top of mind. Do you have access to reliable Wi-Fi? Are you caring for a loved one? Do you have a quiet place to work? The responses we received 
built the foundation for our programming as we prioritized accessibility and flexibility, live and asynchronous instruction, small group work, and project-based learning. Then something remarkable happened. Enrollment in our flagship summer program jumped by more than 200%. We reached more students from poor and rural parts of the country. All of this taught us an important lesson. While we know there's no replacement for in-person learning, it can often leave out those who need access to education the most, who are most likely to be left behind, including black and brown students, lower income students, and students with disabilities. Some students need to return to in-person only education, but some may actually thrive under more flexible virtual learning environments. For all these reasons, we've opted not to revert back to our earlier in-person only model. Instead, we'll offer a hybrid of virtual and in-person programming so that we can bolster our engagement with students who are too often left behind. And I think there's a lesson that everyone in this room can learn from this experience. The idea that certain groups of people are not interested in computer science is simply not true. Our nearly 450,000 students prove otherwise. They just need more support to seek out the tools they need to thrive. I'm certain that we have all the tools we need to meet this moment and tackle these challenges, transforming the way we teach computer science to young people. We believe that passionate, ambitious, and diverse young women are the key to transforming the world, and we're committed to supporting them on their journey into tech. Thank you.